In the last episode, did some mods to the mirrors, got some new switchback sequential lights on there, did some cargo reverse lighting mods, got the whole truck cleaned up, frame is clean, underneath is cleaned, axle's clean, under the hood's clean, a whole bunch of clean. Clay barred it, all that stuff. However, it did not correct the paint because I ran out of time. So I need to start correcting the paint on this, get a good buff and a good polish, wax, and then eventually ceramic coating. But for now, got to get the paint corrected. And I will say when I clay barred it, this had a whole bunch of what I would refer to as rail dust. When I worked in the dealership, that's what we called it. It looks like little spots of rust all over the truck. So the clay bar got 99% of that off. Got a little bit left that uh, I believe the correction compound will take care of. The truck's covered in like just micro scratches and stuff and swirls just from being used and abused and probably not taken care of. We're gonna restore the shine to this paint, get some protectant on it, make it look how it's supposed to look. Well, my go-to stuff for generally minor corrections like this is a dual action compound polisher, McGuire's correction compound, and the associated pad. This will be followed by their finishing wax. It's a two-step process, it's relatively easy, and there's little to no chance of damaging the paint. So for anyone who's new to trying to restore some paint, whether it be a daily driver, even a new vehicle, an older vehicle, this is what I highly suggest. You're not gonna get into damaging or burning through paint like a rotary buffer. Truck is clean, truck is clayed. Let's get started. Just like that, uh, <laughs> except to the whole rest of this giant truck. Fun stuff. For me, it'll probably take an hour. For you, it'll take a minute. As you can see, it's pitch black out. Uh, the only reason there's any light is the light from the garage, and actually I think it's a full moon, so that was up on me. <laughs> Correction compound completely done on the whole truck. Obviously ran out of daylight in time to do the finishing wax. So that's gonna have to come tomorrow. And then we'll work on the frame. I need a way bigger garage. Got the correction compound wrapped up late last night, like I said, out of daylight, so now on to the finishing wax. This is gonna finish up the whole process. I'm probably gonna wait on the ceramic coating though until I take it to the dent guy and he removes the whole bunch of dents and stuff on it. Start waxing. If any of you guys wanna tackle this at home, I have links to all the products, the correction compound, the kit, dual action polisher, all that stuff in the description down below. That way you guys can try it at home. You don't have to be a pro at all. I'm not a pro, I just learn as I go and it's pretty easy to do, it makes a big difference. Paint correction and detailing is done, and she is looking shiny, real shiny, much, much better. Shout out Meguiar's for the great products. Now, on to the frame. That's really gonna make this thing look much, much better. Now, what I do wanna hit the frame one more time. I got some more degreaser, because I wanna make sure that it's like absolutely as clean as can be before applying this paint because that's only going to help the chances of the paint sticking looking good lasting protecting from us all that good stuff
since I spent all that time lifting the truck up and down with two jacks, I really wanted to use this awesome new tool, but I couldn't because my hose doesn't reach all the way outside of the truck. So instead, I'll demonstrate it on my car. This thing's awesome. Really quick and simple way to get your car or truck or whatever lifted up. As you can see guys, you simply slide it under your vehicle. It has this really nice rubber pad, which works perfectly on the 996 because there's a nice jacking point right there under the side skirt. And all you have to do is turn this green valve. You can lift it nice and slow if you want, or you can go a little bit faster. This thing has no problem lifting this car. It's so simple and easy to use. And it's way faster than using the jack. And to let it down, you just turn the red valve. It really couldn't get easier than that to lift a car or a truck. I would show you and lift my truck up, but like I said, my air hose doesn't actually reach all the way outside. But that thing will lift five tons. That's a five ton airbag. So as long as you have an air compressor to support it, that'll lift darn near anything. Certainly anything that I'll ever own. Just make sure the red valve is closed and turn the green valve and up you go. Easy to go down and easy to go right back up. Now this thing will lift from five and a half inches all the way up to 16. So it's got a nice full range of motion. It can lift a car in five seconds and it can inflate and deflate as fast or slowly as you choose in your particular scenario. And what's nice too is it, it's relatively lightweight for what it is. It's lighter than your typical hydraulic jack. It's faster than your hydraulic jack. It can lift more than your hydraulic jack. It's got wheels on it. It's nice to move around. It's definitely a useful tool that I'm gonna get a lot of use out of here in the home garage. So if you'd like to get your own Viver Air Jack, I've got a link in the description box below. There's also a discount code down there. So big thanks to Viver for sponsoring this video. I could do this all day. You'll have to excuse the noise. All the neighbors are doing yard work and I'm working on cars yet again. So the truck is all nice and dry. Let it sit overnight. And when it comes to the frame paint, I went with a very expensive option, Eastwood 2K Aerospray Chassis Black in a satin black finish. Now this stuff is supposed to be the most durable aerosol paint available. Sprays like a spray gun. I just want it to last. So I spent a lot of money on this. This is like 33 bucks a can. And I got three cans worth. Hopefully I don't need that much, but we'll see. It's actually, this is like, there's an activation on the bottom. So it actually sprays more like uh, a clear coat with a hardener per se. So it should make for a more hard and long lasting finish. That's what I'm hoping at least. I gotta read these directions here. I gotta stick it for two minutes. Now to activate it, this is pretty cool. I assume that did it. Now I shake it for another two minutes. A lot of shaking, a lot of shaking going down here. All right, that should be, it should be more than enough. Here goes nothing. And number two.
Update, should have worn gloves. For sure, this king lives like dick exploding on me. Nice use of $33. Well, I'm gonna have to get a refund on this can because it's uh, it's hardly spraying and it's freaking obviously going all over me. $33. All right, let's try can number three, unfortunately. That's a wrap on that. I used a, uh, ooh, sheesh. I used about the two and a quarter cans because that one can exploded, freaking junk. I Hopefully we get a refund. I got it from Amazon. Maybe they'll send me another one. But I got good coats everywhere that I wanted to. So now it's just time to let it dry and see what it ends up like. Right now it's shiny. Obviously, it'll once it dries, it'll be uh, the matte finish. Got a couple coats done, boys. It's, uh, I ran out of paint, obviously, but I got everything covered and it's looking good. I'm very, very happy with it. So as long as it lasts, we're good to go. And if you notice, I didn't do a few things that you might suspect I would do, like the leaf springs, the hitch, the diff cover. Well, that's because those are some of the things I wanna get taken off, sandblasted, and powder coated for this truck. Mainly the reason I haven't done it yet is because I don't know what color. So if you guys could let me know your, your thoughts for accent colors for this truck, and this would translate into traction bars, intercooler piping, turbos, stuff like that. I want it to all match. White's kind of tricky because you could do a lot of colors, and I'm not sure what I want to go with. Paint's pretty dry. It's got not gloss anymore. It's got that nice matte finish. Overall, really happy with the end result, guys. As you guys can see, like the frame isn't perfect. There's still, like it's not perfectly smooth. I didn't grind it down, take a wire wheel to it, get it sandblasted, any of that. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for protection and longevity and just to make it look better because it looked like crap. All that famous GM wax coating had come off as it always does and it gets all over you and everywhere. So I will certainly do a follow up video to this with how it looks in you know a few months through winter, all that good stuff. Hopefully it lasts just as fine. Now I gotta keep working on the truck because I have wheels and tires sitting right there. So that's coming up soon in a video. I don't know if it'll be the next one or one after that, but thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.